general feature of uh, metabolic pathway is the third one all metabolic pathways are irreversible so all metabolic pathways are irreversible you cannot reverse it for example if you convert a into b you cannot convert b back into a through the same route so if this is reaction number one by you cannot reverse it b back to a so if at all you want to reverse the reaction then it has to take a different route which means b will be converted to x x is converted to y and y is converted to a and this it will take a different route there are several advantages for for not reversing metabolic pathways primarily so it becomes an independent pathway an independent pathway can have independent react independent regulatory mechanism so pathway number one can have its own regulatory mechanism pathway number two can have its own regulatory mechanism so independent control that is an important part of over the general feature of metabolism now as you look at it uh, uh, how a cell will ensure that metabolic pathways are not reversed what it does is very interesting what it does is there will be a huge free energy change in one of the steps a huge free energy change so either either delta g this will be negative so you know from your earlier classes that if the delta g is negative so it is it is difficult unless you invest energy into this it cannot be reversed back let us take an example in order to understand this so we have in glycolysis we have a reaction that is phosphoenol pyruvate that is converted to pyruvate what is the amount of energy exchanged in that minus 31.7 kilojoules per mole energy is spent in order to convert pep to pyruvate so that much energy sorry energy is liberated in that process now if you want to bring back pyruvate back into pep that will happen in gluconeogenesis what it does is pyruvate is not directly converted pyruvate is converted to oxaloacetic acid and then oxaloacetic acid is converted into phosphoenol pyruvate note that in order to make this reaction uphill and atp is used here and another gtp is used here so in the overall uh, energy exchange is minus 25 kilojoules per mole it's very interesting okay so therefore you cannot reverse the pathway so how it ensures that the pathway cannot be reversed by ensuring that one of the step will have a huge negative delta g value when we speak about negative delta g value we should also understand that if the delta g values are additives you can keep on adding uh, if you look at a, a metabolic pathway for example if a is converted to b b to c c to d d to p we are talking about the either reversibility of the entire pathway what it does is one of these steps if this is step one two three and four one of these steps it will make irreversible and that is known as the committing step generally if the committing step is going to be one of the first step because if it is the first step there will there will be no unwanted synthesis of intermediates no unwanted wastage of energy in order to prevent all these generally if the committing step will be one of the first step for example if the committing step is three unnecessarily we create a CEB etc several enzymes must be synthesized in order to prevent the wastage so committing step is normally either this is going to be the committing step we have just seen that uh, if the delta G values are additives many times what a metabolic pathway does is if A is converted to B plus C and it may have a delta G value of uh, a positive value let us say positive 5 plus 5 kilojoules 
okay plus five so with the plus value the reaction cannot go on now what it does is if b can be cleaved into d uh, okay if b can be cleaved into d that has a delta g value of let's say minus eight kilojoules per mole minus eight so the reaction will move in the forward direction as we have seen it is an addictive therefore effectively what happens a is converted to d plus c a is converted to d plus c so what is the net energy result here delta g zero prime is equal to minus three kilojoules per mole which means it is still in the minus it still has the capacity to drive the reaction in the forward so this negative delta g values will give the reactions a purpose reactions a direction this particular concept is made used elaborately in many metabolic reactions what it does is see all reactions may not have a minus uh, uh, negative delta g value what it does is it will do this kind of coupling of reactions it will do coupling of reactions what is the meaning of coupling of reactions so in the energy that is derived from one reaction when a is converted to b whatever energy is released for example if atp is released here so from adp uh, atp is produced here now this atp is utilized for converting c to d okay so this energy is utilized so this kind of coupling of reactions occurs simple analogy if you have a mountain here you have used a lot of energy in order to you know roll a stone up here you have spent energy in rolling a stone up here you drop the stone drop the stone and that stone for example if it can break a coconut into two pieces that energy is used for breaking the coconut into two pieces that is coupling of reactions you will see this kind of a theme repeatedly being used in the entire metabolic reactions now we need to look at in the entire metabolism based on this coupling of reactions what happens in metabolism is you have energy rich energy rich nutrients okay which are the energy rich nutrients we have carbohydrates we have proteins we have uh, you know lipids so these are the energy rich nutrients so let us put it in a box energy rich nutrients now in the process of degradation these energy rich nutrients are converted to energy energy poor end products so which are the energy poor end products you have carbon dioxide you have water you have ammonia you have lactic acid all these are the energy poor end product at the end of metabolism what happens in the process we will derive energy energy in the form of atp energy as nadph so in these two form energy is derived from these biomolecules now this degradative process are called catabolism catabolism is the breaking down of energy rich nutrients now what happens with this energy that is liberated is it is used for assembling the monomeric units so you have the monomeric units so you have the monomeric units like amino acid you have fatty acid you have bases you have you know sugars etc monosaccharides monosaccharides all these monomeric units are available what we are trying to do is we will use the energy combine these monomeric units into the polymeric forms in the polymeric forms which are the polymeric forms you have polysaccharides you have proteins you have nucleic acid you have uh, uh, lipids so you make the polymeric forms by using this energy okay by using so you get adp and nadp plus so this is the entire process of metabolism and this is what is known as 
anabolism. Synthesis, anabolism. So effectively, metabolism is, the entire metabolism is this kind of coupling of reactions where energy is liberated, same energy is utilized in order to produce uh, new biomolecules. Another important general feature of metabolism is metabolic reactions, every metabolic reaction occur in very specific location. So when you consider a cell, so what you need to do is you are expected to draw a cell, draw a cell, draw all the components of the cell nu uh, in the nucleus, you have the mitochondria, you have you know in the uh, Golgi bodies, you have the Golgi bodies, you have the lysosomes, you have the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, so all these components you draw in a cell and then identify which all pathways will take place here. For example, in the cytoplasm, you will have things like glycolysis will be taking place in the cytoplasm. Gluconeogenesis, uh, glycogen breakdown, all these will occur in the cytoplasm. Or, uh, the, uh, the, the synthesis of fatty acid will occur in the cytoplasm. Look at mitochondria, oxidation of fatty acid will take place in the mitochondria. TCA cycle will take place in the mitochondria. So urea cycle will take place in the mitochondria. Porphyrin synthesis, part of it will take place in the mitochondria. Look at the ribosomes. What will happen in the ribosomes? Synthesis of protein will take place. Synthesis of mRNA will take place in the nucleus. So this way, every pathway has a very specific location. What is the advantage of arranging or having a pathway in a specific location? It is mainly for uh, regulatory purpose that comes to the, the so-called the last point which we are going to discuss under the general features of metabolism that is uh, all metabolic pathways are regulated metabolic pathways are regulated at three levels one level is uh, in the synthesis of the enzyme okay Synthesis of the enzyme can be regulated. So if the enzyme concentration can increase or it can decrease depending on the need of the cell. So synthesis of the enzyme can be regulated. Second, if the activity of the enzyme can be regulated. So activity of enzyme. How to regulate the activity of the enzyme? Especially if the enzyme is an allosteric enzyme, the activity of the enzyme can be regulated. Either it can be made more active or it can be made less active. Third and the most important one, by regulating in the substrate concentration. We write it like this, regulating the substrate concentration. If the transport of a substrate molecule to a particular place can be regulated. For example, if pyruvate is needed in the mitochondria for TCA cycle to happen, the, the, the transport of pyruvate can be regulated by its own mechanism. So that these are the three ways by which metabolic pathways are regulated. What is important for us to see is these general features of metabolism is being repeated in almost every pathway. And you have to keep your eyes open in order to see which of the general features you are able to identify as you go through every metabolic pathway. Have a great time in understanding and in studying metabolic pathways.